not looking at the ball. He's late getting out of his stance. And the rush off the edge beats him to the quarterback. Eric Dungy had no chance on this play. Please reset the game clock. First down, Thompson. And he's got a receiver, but Bulky blasts him. Bulky Radley Hiles, the freshman from Inglewood, California, with a big stick. And both players are down. Blaze Gammon is the tight end. Blaze Gammon is 6'7", 255 pounds. Brendan Radley Hiles is only 186 pounds. He's only 5'9". My goodness. Ten yards through the air. Can you bring the foul perfectly timed up? Excellent shot by special teams. But it looks like he's going to stay conservative. Fourth and ten. Wilkins lines up. He's going to air it all out to the goal line. Darby holds it in. Inside the five. Here comes a flag. Six seconds on the clock in the fourth. Multiple flags. Darby, who's been huge all night, and he just goes up, high points the football. Takes a shot to the head by Trenton Thompson, but that ball might have hit the ground, Carter. It's clearly targeting. It's clearly targeting, but if this ball comes out and it's incomplete, then the incompletion. The ruling on the field of targeting is confirmed. Number 18 of the defense is disqualified. However, it was also determined that the pass was incomplete. They've got every much a, a shot as these other teams of getting to the conference championship. I agree, they're hot right now. Hey! Russo on first down, nobody open, shovels it to Mack, who cannot hold on, and takes a big hit after the play, second down. Jeff Collins is out on the field, and the here comes a late flag. I, I, this appears to be a defenseless player, and Michael Pitts, the Jack linebacker for the Bearcats, that may be his last play of the day. But the hit here. You know, and the difficult thing about that for Pitts is you don't know if he's going to catch that ball or not, and at what point do you, do you pull up? Now, I, I get it. I understand that what this ruling is for, and, I mean, they are – this – this Temple sideline is, is going bananas. Jeff Collins having to be held back by his, his staff. Looking at this play for potential targeting. Targeting was not called on the field, but you can call for a replay review after the play to see if there was targeting. One more look. Does he lead with the crown of the helmet? If he does, then Pitts would be ejected for After the review, remainder of this game. Targeting on the play by number 43, defense. After the 15-yard penalty will be enforced from the previous spot. Number 43 is disqualified. Dead ball Whaley and no pardon me, Chase Hayden in at running back. Story trying to spin his way away from trouble. He got lit. He took a shot and now we got a flag. <laughs> Derek Cornelius, the senior leader, protecting his quarterback with words and shoves. And another flag. And a shot to the face of Grayson Gunner. And another flag. And now the Ole Miss coach is out there to peel their guys back. I don't know if anybody has any laundry left. We've got five flags on the field. Here's a possible targeting. Number three coming in. Shot to the there back of the head. Fouls. Personal foul. Targeting with the crown of the helmet on the defense. After the play, multiple unsportsmanlike conduct fouls on both teams. That's unsportsmanlike conduct. Number 74, 89 offense. Number 12, 26 defense. Those fouls offset. So he is done for the day. We'll change out of the uni. And this Ole Miss defense, which has been besieged by injuries, will lose another key play.
Little bubble to Cornelius. He wants to throw. Throw back to Storm. He gets stuck. He took a shot to the gut. It's a loss of five. And that is a perfectly legal play for Victor Evans. Big time shots. This was targeting. They got Vernon Dasher tossed for the game. And then Cornelius with the throwback. And a clean hit with a shoulder. It does come. Dallas picks it up. Intercepted. Juan Thornhill. And Thornhill keeps on going. We have an official down on the interception. It didn't move, and Juan Thornhill was having none of it, and it hits him right in the chest, and then Thornhill turns into a really good athlete. The official. And makes the most out of it. Yeah, look at that official. You talk about being in harm's way. Oh, my Lord. Kelly in motion. Perkins wants shot, but it's through his hands. Boy, there are hurricanes everywhere, and that might be a late personal foul coming. They're already without Derek Smith for the first half after a targeting penalty last week. That's Michael Jackson. And I think this targeting is going to be upheld, and that's going to be Miami without maybe their best cover corner, who has made himself into a really good player, a very good tackler, much more physical on the outside. But to me, that's textbook targeting. We'll check. After review. Personal foul with targeting number 28. Defense is confirmed. That is a 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Number 28 is disqualified for the game. And sip is to punt. He's going straight up with it here. Waddle has to. Oh, we got fair catching a run over. And there's flags all over, and I hope he's not hurt because he was not looking. He was only looking at the ball. And Javaris Davis just leveled him. And that brings out the Boo Birds here at Bryant Denny. You talk about not seeing one coming. Well, I'll tell you, it's it's shocking right now the lack of discipline that this Auburn football team is playing with early in this football game. Emotionally, I don't know if they're too up for this game or what, but they're not ready to play. Taylor Waddle's going to run off on his own. That's good to see. Man, you get hit enough when you see him coming without something like this happening. Penalty is fourth from the spot of the foul. First down. And he's, and he's fortunate that it wasn't even targeting. I mean, it was close. He's hanging in the balance, and it's on his defense to try to get off the field. And the Wolverines are running back from the 16-yard line. On the move, Brad Hawkins. Targeting was the call. Yeah, there was a targeting. I believe it was... Berkeley Edwards is the player down for Michigan. Let's hope that Edwards is okay. Edwards 32. There's Cam Jones came in. They did call a targeting. But Tony set the punt. End over end, one hopper down to the 15. Marquez Callaway drops immediately. Might have got a yard out of that. Nice job on the special teams. There's a review going on as to whether or not there was a targeting foul on the punt return by Marquez Callaway. And last night, when we talked to Barry Odom, we asked him what was targeting. He says, I don't know. Yeah. He said, What do you do if you're a defensive player and the offensive ball carrier ducks his head? What are you supposed to do at that play Tevin Ross number six was trying to tackle him around the waist and all of a sudden Callaway lowers as his ball carrier down. I would not call that targeting. I know it was helmet to helmet but I don't know what the defender's supposed to do. Tavon looking on as Hubert Owens is going to make the call. After review the ruling is that number six from Missouri committed a targeting foul. Number six is disqualified. 15-yard penalty for the end of the run. 
first down. You told me I couldn't pick up a cup of coffee. I was so weak. You know? I was being honest. <laughs> <laughs> and it's dead. Ooh, a hard hit at the end of that. And flags coming in. Oh, boy. Homer up the middle. Runs a man over. Keeps turning his legs. Down to the 10-yard line. Yeah, that was the senior, Westbrook. How do those shoulder pads taste? Francois, long time to throw over the middle. And a flag thrown from the secondary for the hit. Say that was a legal hit. And I think it is. That's a second level window throw. That is a throw late over the middle, and Jaquan is going for the football. And Ed Reed, who was honored and put in the Hall of Fame today, made a living doing just that, punishing guys. If you're going to run late across the middle, he didn't leave with his head. That shoulder hits his shoulder. He's absolutely attacking the football. This cannot be targeting. I see forcible contact to the shoulder. I see a safety that is running and trying to make a play. After review, there is no foul for targeting. On a third down play, motion for Howard, Spate goes to the left, turns around, looking for somebody to throw it to, and then just throws it away. Underneath the stands, there's a flag in the back of the end zone. That's probably not good news for USC. And then Peely just hit an offensive lineman right in the face after the play. <laughs> wow. Usually. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Defense number 91. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. So that is number 91's first unsportsmanlike foul of the game. Losing their cool. I mean, in battle. This is just hard to understand. Would have been third and goal from the five instead. Yeah. First and goal at the two and a half. And you hit a guy in the in the helmet as if it's going to hurt. <laughs> Round three, really close. Phil Mathis stopped them like right at the marker. The late flag come in and Raekwon Davis was mixing it up in the backfield. The penalty is 15 Whoa. yards in the succeeding spot. Automatic first down. Wow. Raekwon boxing's coming up after this game. And Nick Saban sees it immediately pulls him out of that football game. You know the question is we'll go back and look at that again to see what happened to promote promote him to do that. But they always catch the second guy in those acts. Can't get ejected for throwing a punch. About to get an earful from the head coach. He was trying to lobby his way back onto the field and save it. Said, I, I got another idea. Over 16 yards per return. Let's see if he has an opportunity. A low line drive kick. And Burns got drilled at the 48 yard line. There's about three flags that were thrown on the play. Here's another look at it. Correction. Both fouls are against the receiving team. Oh, wait a minute. That's not right. Both against the receiving team. Well, the punting which team. Louisville. They're a little confused down there on the field, partner. Yeah, folks, we'll try and sort it out for you and get the word from them on the other side of this. Big impact. Mm. There are two fouls on the play, which will offset. However, they're targeting against number eight, stands. Therefore, we will replay the down, fourth down. Avenue to the quarterback. Amari Rogers hit immediately, drilled at the 37 yard line, and a flag down. The hit on the play. Made by Marion Character. One more look at that last targeting penalty that was called against Character a moment ago. Why well, Mari Rogers in there? Yeah, he knew right away, and Character is done. It's a dangerous he, play, man. Yeah, the ruling on the field confirmed by. This is working. Here's Aiden Alves to punt it again. Short kick as last time. This one a little bit better. Reynolds, fair catch. He'll field it on the run. Mike Reynolds, good return back. Gets it over the 50, and then he's popped and dropped at the 46-yard line. 
So a good be thrown out of this game. You can see him lower his head, forcible contact yep. to the head, the neck area. And one of the things that they look for is lowering the head. And that's exactly what he did there. He lowered with the crown of his helmet and came in to try and make this tackle yeah. and made contact to that jaw neck area. After review, there was targeting on the play. Number 38 on the kicking team. Number 38 is ejected from the ball game. 15 yards will be added to the end of the run. Quick throw. wasn't just a sprint by Willis. He had an official in his way. He knocked him out of the way. Watch him from this angle. He's got an official in his way. Get oh out of my goodness. way. He took out the center judge, Sean Garrity. That is the defensive play of the game. <laughs> Second and 12, Will Greer waits. Now flushed out of the pocket. He's in trouble. Look out, Will. Time is down under 10 seconds. And he runs down the sideline and almost runs out of time. I, uh, Jeremy Pruitt was irate. Oh. That's what, that's kind of the main emphasis that we've been talking about here. Meanwhile, we're down to five seconds and so much for a touchdown drive that we think should have been a penalty. Yeah, it could have been helmet to helmet that time. It was definitely a peel back block. There's been a new emphasis. One of the rule changes is once that ball leaves, you know, that uh, tackle, tackle box right there. And, I, and I, I, I think that this is reviewable whether not only number one, where he went out of bounds, but whether it was a targeting hit on the play. And Burrow knows it. They give him time. He has a man open. They have a first down. D. Anderson. The ball comes out at the end of the play, and Miami has it. Michael Pickney popped it out. You must take care of the football. You've got to know that this is a team in Miami that thrives on forcing turnovers. you got to protect the ball. Now we're told with this break that the previous play is being reviewed. Well, I think it's being reviewed for targeting. And the question is, was that the crown of the helmet by Trajan Bandy with forcible contact? Well, let's bring in our rules expert, longtime on the field official, Bill Lemonnier. Bill, the replay was reviewing the previous play. After further review, there was targeting by the defense number two. That player has been disqualified. Wow. Tim Jordan back in the backfield Taylor, for Tennessee. Ryan Ray, number 89, is getting an opportunity to play a little bit more in this game. He's taking advantage of it. As he ever. Garantano hit as he throws, lops it out. Jennings. No, it's not Jennings, it's Palmer. And what he made the catch. I'll tell you, you know who else got a catch? It was number 30, Matt Wilson, bearing in on Garantano on the play. He knew he was going to get hit. And Palmer takes Savion Smith's arm with him. There's the hit by oh, Wilson. My goodness. Mac Wilson was coming all out on that play and no one touched him. Ohio State losing, LSU losing, Miami losing in their rivalry game to Florida State. Will the rankings take a major hit? We've got a lot of games going on right now that could shake up the top 25. Jeff Thomas from the goal line. He gets loose with a flag down. Another flag throw. And that might be a third penalty marker. It is. That's a face mask, certainly, on the return by Jeff Thomas. So there are three different penalty markers on the field. And Brock, I think it might be for three separate fouls. And now an altercation as a couple of the Canes players were not happy that the face mask was pulled of Jeff Thomas. And now the Canes coaches are doing whatever they can to keep Miami on the sideline, but there are more players heading towards the Florida State bench than there are coaches to keep them back. And one of the worst parts about it is Jeff Thomas is down in what looks like a horrific lower leg injury. And you can see the frustration there. Those Canes players know it is one of theirs is laying on the ground.
Well, the coaching staffs for both teams do well to keep the sidelines separated. And now, more than anything, you got to be worried about Jeff Thomas because he is still being looked at by the training staff. Now he's up.